So today, I thought we'd take a look at series circuits. In the last episode, we took a look at Ohm's Law and how we can use it to find out values and what our resistance, voltage, and current respectively are in a circuit and the relationship between them. And I was actually going to go straight into AC-DC circuits, just kind of get into it. And I backed up and I said, let me do a video on series circuits, parallel circuits, and then we'll do one also on combination circuits. Because after Ohm's Law, we need to understand more about why, why we want to know the different data in a circuit. So we'll draw a plus and a minus. We'll draw our battery here, a long line, a short line. Showing a, showing a cell. We're going to draw a resistor here and a resistor here. We'll call this one 20 ohms and we'll call this one 10 ohms. And we have a voltage here of 60 volts. We can make this anything we want to make it. We're just looking at two loads or two resistors in series. Well, series is as easy as it gets. When it gets to what our total ohms are in a circuit, if we want to use Ohm's law to figure out, for example, what our current is, well, we know our voltage is 60 volts. We know our resistance is, well, 20 and 10. Well, it's just that easy with a, with a series circuit. They actually combine. So in a series circuit, you are or your RT for R total is equal to your R1 plus R2, you know, dot, dot, dot. So as many as you have, you can have hundreds of them in series. Well, I mean, it's all just added up, right? So our RT is going to be 30 ohms. That's going to be our resistance total. So V over I times R, what is our current going to be? Well, 60 on our voltage over our resistance, which is 30, is going to give us 2 amps. So our total current through this is going to be 2 amps. So that means 2 amps is going to run through this one, and 2 amps is going to run through this one, because the total amount of current in a series circuit, it is the same. The amount of current flowing through any device or any point is the same. So the voltage, the total voltage drop is going to be back all the way to zero. So we are dropping 60 volts across the whole circuit. It's important now to understand Kirchhoff's voltage law. So the voltage around any closed loop is always going to add up to zero. That means we're going to drop this 60 volts across all of our points and be back to zero. 60 volts here. What's the point here? Well, we can calculate this. We can calculate what that voltage is because we know it's going to drop. Well, how, how do we know what the voltage is at this point? Well, now that we know that we have two amps going through the circuit, two amps, we can use Ohm's law again. We know that we have 20 ohms. At, this, at these two points here, we have 20 ohms. We also know that there's two amps. So if we know our amps and our resistance, our current and our resistance, we know I, we know R. So at this point, it's going to be 20 times 2. So this is going to be 40 volts across 40 volts of voltage drop here. We could easily subtract since we only have one left. It should be 20, right? To equal 60 if we're going to drop all across. But what we can do is go 10 times 2 is also 20. So now we actually know our voltage drop across each resistor, our current across the whole circuit. And just to show how helpful this can be, I'm going to show you quickly a circuit I was troubleshooting real recently when you need to know what voltage you're getting at that point. So take a look at this circuit that I looked at recently. It's so small, but I actually had a drawing for it, so it's a good illustration of why this is so important. As we look at this drawing as an example, this is just a board I've been recently working on. We can see by this drawing we have a resistor divider network, a voltage divider network here. It tells us the resistor numbers. 
tells we got a 33k and a 68k coming off and going to our enable enable one on this u7700 voltage regulating chip or power management chip we look here we go to ground all the way up to our 12 volt s5 so our our standby uh, 12 volt supply which I had and I had the 12 volts here and I had ground here so I should have been getting what here question mark to the enable so I was able to use series resistor calculations and use own law to figure this out and see what my voltage should be here on this pin. I don't have a good microscope set up so I can't really show it while I do it but this is what I was doing. This is U7700. If we look here we have resistor R7722 and R7723 and it's, it's easier to look at on the print than it is to, to show it while the camera's rolling here but I actually wasn't getting but about 1.3 volts on that so that let me know since the resistors checked good and my 12 volts was getting to it good checking here I knew something was going on with this chip um, internally pulling it down is another resistance so basically I had another resistor here pulling so that just a real-world example there of why it's important to know this and if so now that we see why that's so important and how in, in real world applications it can help. Now we see how when we see two resistors we can figure out what our volts to be at a certain point. This is just a quick video about series circuits. I didn't want it to be too long of a video today. I hope you learn about series circuits and how easy it is just to add up, sum up the, the resistance. And using Ohm's Law we can come up with a lot of information about a circuit. So in the next episode, we'll look at parallel circuits. A little different, but um, is equally as important to learn and probably the most used circuit because most of our stuff's in parallel because as we see here, we have voltage drop. When you put resistors in parallel, you don't have the voltage drop. You have the same voltage across each load, but it's a little bit different how you calculate the total resistance. So we'll look at that in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.